Okay. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways that we can protect against corrosion. And right back when we introduced corrosion, we did talk about one of those methods of being a barrier. And here we could use things like grease or paint. And yes, what's that going to do? It's going to reduce the likelihood of our um, metallic object from being exposed to that water and oxygen. But what do you, what could you say about the barrier? What would be a, so a pro, a pro of this would be it's cheap. Okay, it's not going to cost very much money to paint it and it's not going to um, cost very much money to apply grease. What would be a bad thing about this Yep. Yeah. Um, so scratched or worn away. And so the moment we do that, the moment we have a scratch, or the moment we've worn it off, corrosion will begin immediately. So it would depend on the application as to, like, just say it's your. Um, your front gate. It could be very rusty and you don't really care. So you're, you're happy to paint it um, because it's not really um, a structural thing, it's just a, a little bit of a barrier. But um, you might feel a little bit differently about you know, the steel reinforcing in your house, for example. So that is one way where we can um, protect our metals. Another way where we can protect it, ah, another barrier. Um, we can use a, a, um, a metal as a barrier. But in this case, we are going to use a weak reducer. Because weak reducers are quite unreactive. And an example of this might be, you know, you've probably heard of a tin can. Okay, you might go, say you're going to buy, you know, tins of baked bean, baked beans or spaghetti or something like that. Well, those cans are steel. Cans are made of steel. Why are we calling them a tin can? And the reason is, the can is actually made of two layers of metal. So we've got our steel, which is mainly iron, and we've got a tin coating on it. And it could be the tin, um, especially for things like tin tomatoes, where <coughs> the contents are quite acidic. This tin will help uh, or will prevent the rusting of the iron. Okay, so if we've got our tomatoes over here, So this is acting as a barrier between the acidic tomatoes and the steel can. So we want to make the can out of steel because steel's cheap. But we don't want our we don't like the taste of rusty tomatoes and so we put in a barrier. And in fact these days most cans would actually be lined with plastic. They have a polymer lining rather than tin because that's even cheaper. Um, but this is something that has um, been quite commonly done in the past. Tell me, what do you think happens if there's a dent in the tin? What might happen if we dent the tin? Chris? Well, it creates one of those um, stress points, so reaction will happen faster there. Yeah, well, we could even potentially put a little crack yeah. in the tin lining, couldn't we? And if we do that, what's going to happen? Okay, so we've got a bit of a crack. We've got tomatoes uh, in contact with the iron. What's going to happen now? 
discoloration. Oh, it will rust. It's going to rust the tin. But not only that, it will rust the tin. Will the tomatoes get base on it? Well, the tomatoes will, um, yeah, the tomatoes will taste rusty. They'll have that iron metallic taste. So here we um, we're going to have corrosion happen. And we've got rusting of the iron. So we've got Fe. Well, uh, there's something else that we just talked about just a few minutes ago. Because the iron's a um, a stronger reducer, it will rust faster. As yes. It ends in contact the, with the tin. The tin will now rust, or this can will rust faster than it would have done without the lining. That's the important thing as well. Okay, so and this can be another reason why if you've got a tin can, some people, you know, like they take just take the top off the tin can and then they don't eat all the contents of the can, put it in the fridge and leave it a week and then eat it. Well, where you've cut the top of the tin, you've deliberately uh, disrupted this protection. And so if it is a tin can, then your food is going to spoil faster than it would have done uh, because we've got this accelerated re uh, reaction happening. So this is my, uh, my advice to you is that you always transfer your food out of a can into another container if you haven't eaten all of the contents and you never buy a dented can. Okay, So let someone else who doesn't know chemistry buy the dented cans. Okay, and so here, if we've broken that barrier, then we have accelerated corrosion. So that's our barrier method, uh, which is called surface protection in, in the booklets. Um, now we're going to look at cathodic protection. And the use of a sacrificial anode. And really, we've already been looking at the chemistry of the sacrificial anode. Um, if you bought zinc alum, or colour bond, steel, you know, so corrugated roofing materials and, and uh, uh, house, house cladding, this is actually zinc and iron in contact. So we have our two metals in contact. But what can you tell me about the oxidation that's going to occur if we have zinc and iron in contact? Emily, you're on fire at the moment. We've got zinc and iron in contact. Which one will oxidize? Have a look at your electrochemical series. Zinc. So zinc will oxidize. And so the iron part here, this is the structural part. <coughs> okay, we want our iron roof or, or wall or whatever. But then we put a zinc coating on it, and it's the zinc then that will oxidize in preference to the iron. And this is the sacrificial anode.
this is why we do it. This is why we apply this coating of zinc to our steel. Or, uh, and the colour bond roofs just have an extra layer over the top of that of paint. So there's a bit of protection for the zinc as well, so the roof will last even longer. The good thing about this kind of protection is that even if there is a break, so if this is the iron under here, and this is the zinc on top, this little part here that's exposed won't rust because of the electron transfer that's happening. That as long as you don't have these the gap too big. If the gap is close enough, there'll be no rusting on the exposed part. And there's another place where you've probably seen this without really realising it, and that's railway lines. Railway lines are made of steel. And what they do is they bolt blocks of zinc to the sides of the rails at certain intervals to make sure that they protect the rails from rusting. If you look at old disused railway lines, you know, the ones that trains aren't going on anymore, they, they, they rust and they're, uh, that's because they haven't been maintained with these blocks of zinc. People who have steel hulled boats also um, attach blocks of zinc to the, to the side of the boat to prevent it from rusting. Because if the rusting is happening under the water level, that could be a little bit of a problem, couldn't it? That you're not able to see if there's a little um, scratch in your paint or a little dent from banging onto the wharf. But if you've got a sacrificial anode attached to your boat, then it doesn't matter. Uh, your boat won't uh, develop a hole in the sink. So, if we've got this cathodic protection and we have these two metals, what are our half equations? What's the oxidation half equation? Zinc metal becomes like iron. Zen makes Zen and two plus. And what about our reduction? our reduction half equation? Oxygen plus two plus two Okay. Yep. Have we, have we written that one often enough yet? Do you reckon? Have it sunk in? And our last method which is also cathode, uh, cathodic protection, is an impressed current. And what we are going to do now, if you look at the, uh, the diagram on page 39, is we're going to attach the metal that we want to protect up to a power supply. And so now, we have this example. It's an underground pipe, and it's an underground steel pipe. And it could be something like for a hydro scheme. It could be a really huge pipe. Or it could um, be um, some other uh, a bridge or something like that. Something that you really want to make sure it doesn't corrode, but it's really difficult to get to. Bridges can be hard to get all around, and buried pipes, if there's a problem and you don't know where it is, you don't want to be put in a situation where you have to dig up the whole pipe to try and find the problem. Uh, or not only that, you, it would be better if you know that you're making sure that a problem can't happen. And that's what this, the idea is here. Is that now because we're pumping the electrons here, and we're going to assume that this is an iron 
type. Because we're pumping electrons to it, it can't oxidise. Okay, the iron here can't oxidise because in oxidation you give away electrons. We're giving it electrons all the time, so it's not going to oxidise. We're going to have an inert electrode. So it can be an unreactive metal or it could be a big lump of carbon. We've already probably unlikely in this scenario to be a big lump of platinum. But it could be an unreactive metal or it could be carbon. And our electrons are travelling in this direction because of the power supply. If the power supply stops working, the steel um, pipe will start to rust. Okay, But while we're pumping electrons to it, it won't. Notice that I've got my terminals around the right way. So the short one is the negative terminal. And the long one is positive. I, I like to think of this in terms of, well, if I write the negative sign, it's only one little line. But if I write the positive sign, I've written two lines. And so if I added them together, it would be longer. <coughs> now, we've got some different half equations to think about here. Because, because we're not, we can't oxidize our inert electrode. And we can't reduce our, our um, cathode. Okay, so this here is the anode. This is the cathode. And because of the composition of, of the inert electrode, we cannot oxidize this anode. And we know we can't reduce the iron. The only thing around that we can oxidize and reduce is water. And so our cathode half equation is another one that you're going to be finding on the electrochemical series soon. these two half equations um, later on. But this is an impressed current as our third way that we can protect from corrosion. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? I didn't really understand why in the second one there's any